Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of the Sofa War with Russia and in my daily videos I try to update you on the situation in my country Ukraine to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history and our culture and today I want to speak more about the evil that Russian orcs do to Ukrainian cultural heritage it goes without saying that the majority of people who follow the events in Ukraine understand that it is not just the war against NATO, it is not just the war for some political or economical reasons, but it is Putin's war about Ukrainian nation against Ukrainian nation in general. And I'm not afraid to compare that to genocide. Not only they try to target our military or our civilian objects, but they definitely target our cultural objects. I do remember a couple of years ago watching that devastation that Idil caused to many countries. I was surprised how uh, uncivilized this war was because for me it was always obvious that something that is treated as its cultural heritage for centuries or for thousands of years must be preserved because it does not even belong to the country it is located in. It is a general global cultural heritage. and. The Russian orcs also demonstrate a total uh, desire to ruin and to erase everything that is important for Ukraine and everything that can be interesting to the larger audiences. And today we have woken up to news that one of the, the very important museums was targeted by Russian troops. It is located in Kharkiv region. And it was dedicated to a very famous Ukrainian philosopher, Hrhoi Skorda. I want to tell you a little bit about this philosopher because I think he's very interesting and his works are translated into many languages and perhaps he is one of those cultural, culturally important persons that can tell you a lot about our country. And this year was marked by UNESCO as the year of his birthday and the museum was getting ready to celebrate Rihori Skovorada's 300th anniversary and now it is destroyed. Luckily, uh, many important exhibits were taken out. So Russian soldiers and Putin's regime did not manage to destroy his heritage. Moreover, his main heritage, of course, are his literary and philosophical works. But the building in which museum was located and it's closely connected to life and death of Rigori Skorda is destroyed. And the son of the director of that museum was wounded, but hopefully everything will be fine with him. So let me introduce you to Rigori Skorda, whom, uh, pers whose personality is very interesting and worth more um, like uh, fame or, I don't know, interest in the world. He was a very interesting philosopher of his time and his main idea was freedom. He loved walking from one town to another, from one village to another village. And he was like, I cannot say a hiker, but he was a person always on a road. He never owned a house or anything else, but he spoke many languages, including Old Latin, Greek, Jewish, German. So he was able to educate children and often he lived at big houses of various people. And at the same time, he could spend the whole summer walking and staying for night in the forests or in the fields. But interestingly enough, he uh, loved uh, expensive things too and in his uh, bag he would always have a good bottle of wine, a bible, uh, some expensive tobacco and uh, he played musical instruments, he loved parmesan and it was difficult to get him you know 300 years ago and he also wore glasses which was kind of unusual for that period of time and that was also a very expensive accessoire and at the same time his philosophical thoughts are very much about the freedom of human spirit and one of his very famous quotations was that the world wanted to catch me but couldn't and uh, he did not need possessions he did not need money 
and uh, his philosophy is very modern i would say some of us ukrainians call him the first hipster or i don't know if it's proper because definitely he's larger than this word uh, another interesting thing about Skovoroda is that he somehow predicted his death and he returned to the village uh, which he liked the best uh, in the whole world and he communicated with lots of people, he shaved himself, he um, spent a nice dinner, then he went out into the yard, into the garden in that village, dug a grave covered it with oak leaves, returned back to the house, went to sleep and never woke up. So he did not commit suicide, but perhaps he had this really strong spiritual powers or somehow he managed to feel himself. So I don't know, how do you describe it when a person feels himself or herself? So like when you control everything in your body or whatever, but this is a true story about Rihori Skovorada and his relationship with the world and on his grave he asked once again to put a stone not a cross and on that stone he put that very famous phrase that the world wanted to catch me but could not somehow he managed to escape all these webs of problems he was never married and um, he was always free from various political movements and he valued his freedom the most so Ukraine was getting ready to celebrate his 300th anniversary this year and UNESCO supported this idea and the museum is actually located in that village where he was buried and today it was destroyed by Russian orcs who of course uh, fight the Ukrainian nation in general. By the way, the portrait of Rihori Skovoroda also decorates uh, a bill of Ukrainian money. 500 hryvnias have the portrait of Rihori Skovoroda. But interestingly enough, he did not like money. He did not like the idea of money. So it was like um, an interesting thing that we have him on our money, despite the fact he disliked money. Uh, but anyway, I think that his cultural heritage is definitely uh, larger than the museum and many of Ukrainian optimists, and it's very important for us to remain optimists, um, believe that this museum and the thing that it was destroyed by bombings today will only help attract more attention to this prominent philosopher who can be interesting for people all over the world and I do hope you might google or find some quotes about him. Today in my city we have the first thunderstorm and once again thanks to orcs many people are afraid of thunder because you don't know what's going on at the very first sound. To tell you the truth I started also hating planes. When you hear a plane flying <laughs> You do it like that because you don't know whether it's a plane or when you hear a motorcycle, especially at night somewhere far away. So we are a little bit afraid of all those sounds and anticipating the 9th of May because we realize there will be lots of interesting events, but we have to stay strong and demonstrate our bravery, especially on this sacred for Russian uh, troops day and I think in Ukraine we will celebrate it together commemorate it together with the rest of the world on the 8th of May and also tomorrow I'll be really glad to meet all of you in our live stream maybe I will make some mistakes I'm sure I will make some mistakes but I hope you will forgive that thank you for watching thank you for your subscriptions Slava Ukraini